Hi, this is Scott Dudley, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up content groups in GA4 using Google Tag Manager. So the first thing that we need to do in Google Tag Manager is click on the variables tab on the left hand side here. Then if we scroll down to user defined variables, and what we're going to do is set up a regex table with the content groups. So just quickly to show you how to uh, create this variable if we click on so we're under user defined variables we click on new then we click on this lego brick and then what we want in here is a regex table which is down here regex table okay so if i just close this and then we open up the one that i've already created which is this one here so you want to name the variable, obviously something that makes sense. So content group is perfect. And then for the uh, input variable, you want to put in the page path. Okay, so they're in alphabetical order, these variables, you want page path. And then under here, you're going to click on add row to create your regex table, which is going to include all of the categories for your content groups. So basically how this works is that we're grabbing parts of the URL that contain the category that you want to use. So if you have a website that already has categories, and this is going to be perfect, categories in the URL structure, then this is going to be perfect. Otherwise, I guess you can look at um, when you're writing a blog post, then you're generally going to have the name of the category in the title of the blog post or, or something along those lines. But basically what we're trying to do here is use the the URL to come up with our content groups. All right. So we need to create both a pattern and an output. So for this particular example, this one here is going to output GA4 as a content group for my website. And what I've done here is I've created three different variations of the URL and I've put the pipe symbol in between each variation, which basically separates them. And what's going to happen here is that GTM is going to look at all of these options here between the pipe symbols. And if one of them matches the URL, then it's going to output the content group as GA4. So the other important thing here to keep in mind is that URLs are generally lowercase. So it's best to keep these as lowercase. And between the words in a URL, you have a dash. So you want to make sure that, for example, if you're going to use two words like Google Analytics, that you do Google dash analytics. Okay, and then in this case, dash four. So that way it will pick up anything that has Google Analytics four in the URL. It will also pick up anything that has Google Analytics, and it will also pick up anything that has GA4 in the URL as well. And it will output that as GA4 for the actual name of the content group. And then I've just done the same thing here for the rest of these. So GTM is the output. And I've got here either Google dash tag dash manager and then the pipe to separate them or just GTM and then uh, Looker Studio LS is the uh, my abbreviation for Looker Studio and you'll see here that I've got Google dash data dash studio as one of the options then the pipe symbol to separate it and then Looker dash studio. We don't actually need the pipe at the end here. The pipe only needs to go between the words. Okay, so I won't go through all of these. You, you get the general idea. Um, and then the other thing down the bottom here is it's a good idea to set a default value. So basically what that means is that GTM will run from the top to the bottom. As soon as it finds a match here, it will output th this as the content group. If it doesn't match any of these rows, then that's where you want to set a default value. So you just uh, check this box and then usually you put other in here but you might want to put something else um, just as a default in case none of these match um, so 
probably didn't mention as well that you can keep adding rows by clicking on this add row and it will give you the option here to add another one or if you want to remove it you just click the minus sign and then the other important thing here is the advanced settings so this is where i recommend that you ignore the case so just in case there is capital letters in the url then it will ignore that and it will just match what you've got up the top here full matches only uh, i would recommend that you keep this unchecked because as it says if enabled patterns must match the entire input so this for example here would only return google tag manager if there's something after uh, google tag manager in the url it's not going to match it so it's best to keep that off um, and also enable capture groups and replace functionality i've never actually um, bothered to have a look at this but as it says here if enabled you can use dollar sign replacement syntax to include portions of the input so unless you need that you'd keep that unchecked as well and then obviously you click on save up the top here to save your changes and then it's just a matter of updating your GA4 configuration tag which you should have already set up uh, if you've got GA4 set up on your website so this is GA configuration here. If you haven't got this set up, then obviously you'll need to set it up. So just very quickly, you want to, uh, the tag type is Google Analytics GA4 configuration. And then the measurement ID in here, you can either copy and paste the measurement ID from your Google Analytics account and pop it in here. Or as I've done, you can create a variable and then just call that variable in here um, so that you don't have to keep um, copying and pasting that. You can just basically select the variable which already has the measurement ID in it. So you don't need to worry about this for, for the content groups, but the important thing here is that you want to click on um, under fields to set. You want to click on add row and you want to add content uh, underscore group as the field to set and the value is going to pick up the uh, content group variable that we just created before okay so just ignore this one up the top here this has got nothing to do with content groups but you will want to add this row here for content underscore group for the field name and the value is the content group which if you click on the lego brick you should be able to find that in here which is there okay or if you've named it something else then obviously it'll be called something else all right so uh triggering if you haven't set this up yet then you'll want to make sure that your ga4 configuration tag is set to all pages as a page view then you'll click on save and then you'll need to wait let's say 24 hours or so this doesn't start um, uh, displaying straight away in ga4 but give it 24 to 48 hours and you should start to see your content groups populating. So then the next question is, how do you actually find those? Well, you wanna click on reports on the left-hand side here, and then we want engagement. And then under engagement, you want pages and screens. And then once you're in the pages and screens report, there's a drop down here underneath this search with a few options. And you wanna click on content group. And then you can see here that uh, there's three of the content groups that I've set up. Um, the other ones, obviously, I haven't created any content for, which is why they're not displaying. But just looking at this report quickly, we can see that LS, Looker Studio, is receiving a lot more views than the content that I've created for GA4 and GTM. And there is some here that are not set as well. So... Um, until you actually set up the content groups, then it will show as not set. But once you've created these, the, once you've created the content groups, then you shouldn't be seeing this not set, um, provided the date ranges that you've selected um, are set after you've set this up. And then you can display this in Looker Studio. So this is just an example here. What are my top user channels? Um, sorry not that one this one what are my top content groups and you can see here there's the ls looker studio which has got by far the most views ga4 gtm um, and this one here was the uh the not set one that i just spoke about so that's just a good way to 
visually display that information in a report, which is just basically pulling from the information that's in GA4. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you've got any more ideas for videos that you'd like me to create, just let me know in the comments. Uh, other than that, have a great day.